So your product is active on Amazon and now you need to create an ad campaign. So which type of ad campaign should you create? An auto campaign, a manual campaign? What is the difference between both? And what are the common mistakes that most sellers make once they launch their ad campaign? In this video, we're gonna be focusing on the first ever ad campaign that you should launch whenever you have a new product on Amazon, and that's the auto campaign. And two main mistakes that most sellers make once they do launch that auto campaign. Mistake number one, having the wrong mindset, meaning thinking that this auto campaign is just there to get you sales. And mistake number two, setting it and forgetting forgetting about the auto campaign and thinking just because it's called automatic campaign means it's gonna work automatically. Both these things you need to avoid. Let's dive a little bit deeper. If this is your first time watching a video on this channel, hi, my name is Crystal and I'm the founder of Amazon Sellers Society and Sellers Society. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you are subscribed to the channel if you love Amazon, selling online, e-commerce, all of that juicy information, especially in the Middle East. In this video, I'm having a conversation with Rick Wong, the founder of Seller Metrics, and we're going to be talking about the common mistakes that most sellers make when they launch their auto campaign, especially the auto campaign. What type of mindset should you have when you create an auto campaign? And all about software that can help you automate your PPC ads. Let's get going. So Rick, we want to talk about PPC ads, potentially the least interesting subject about Amazon, but one of the most important things to learn. So you are an Amazon seller yourself, you sold your business, a lot of things, but now we're focusing on PPC ads and especially the mistakes that sellers make once they launch uh, or maybe how they use an auto campaign and how they launch it, all of those juicy details. But first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I know, but tell everyone who's watching the video a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'll sort of try to make this as short as possible. Uh, but my experience uh, selling on Amazon uh, happened four years ago yeah. when I took a uh, half a year sabbatical away from work. I was, I'm was i originally from Canada, and uh, I work in the financial service industry. Uh, as you know, um, I just got bored of being a banker, yeah. and then I thought it was time to explore. Uh, I'm not sure you um, remember the book Four Hour Workweek. Yes, of course. Yeah. So that's basically, uh, that book blow up. So I yeah. ended up reading it. That kind of inspired me to kind of just leave my- uh, So page. it's Tim Ferriss's fault. We should, we, should, we should thank him. It's actually not his fault. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah Tim Ferriss, uh, he inspires so many people. Yeah. And on my trip to Southeast Asia, I did the whole Southeast Asia uh, trip thing. And uh, that's where I met uh, an Amazon seller. And at that point, uh, what he told me kind of blew my mind because my family didn't come from a background of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So when I talked to people within my circle, like they were very, very skeptical about this. And he, in essence, become my, became my Yoda. And basically yeah. really uh, pushed me, uh, really encouraged me, really imparted with me some knowledge. And this chance encounter really opened up my eye. And then after trip, that's when I decided to try to finally take the plunge and make my first order on Alibaba. So long story short, um, I made my first order, decided to move to Hong Kong, where, where I am right now, because I want to be closer to the supplier. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, fast forward 2020, last year around COVID, that's when actually um, I sold my business. And I guess that's maybe a story for another time. Yeah, but that's a dream. Like most people think that this is not something that you can do. You're always going to be selling physical products. But actually, uh, I wanted you to, to to mention it because it's it's um, it's a you know it's another way to make money on Amazon. Just build a brand and a business and sell it, just like you did. Yeah, I think with 
sell it on Amazon. Um, you can also cannot think about an exit because that really mm. messes up with the brand building part. For sure. I think the best thing is to have the mindset of just building a brand, mm. uh, satisfying your customer. If you satisfy your customer, you will satisfy Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And, it, and in 2000, and last year, I sold my business and uh, it grew up to 25 SKUs uh, in the consumer electronic niche, uh, supported five supported by five full-time employees. Mm. So you sold it and then you decided to, rather than um, rather than set up another brand, you decided, okay, maybe it's time for me to help other sellers, other Amazon sellers. Yeah, exactly. Like one thing I love actually helping out specifically is Amazon uh, PPC. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe it's like the financial... Um, mm. backgrounds oh, yeah. from maybe but I do find like helping people on their Amazon PPC advertising uh, really uh, I really enjoy it and I do and I in 2016 or basically beginning on my selling uh, career I've actually developed like some automation script for Amazon PPC so and I also found the current market in terms of Amazon PPC software solutions also lacking. Mm. There isn't too many software solutions, I would say, that is specifically developed for the sellers. So that is when I kind of had my entrepreneur hat on and decided to create Seller Metrics, which is an Amazon PPC software that really is built for the seller themselves to scale. So let's get started with what we want to talk about, which is what we both see is an issue with most people, especially when they maybe, let's say, start out on Amazon. You focus so much on the product, making sure it's, a, it's a, an in-demand product that ticks all the boxes as close to perfection as possible. You create a listing, you do all of that. And then once a product is active on Amazon, you say, okay, hold on. So now I need to do ads. Uh, what is the easiest ad campaign to create? You go ahead and you just uh, create the ad campaign that you think as a seller is something that just automatically, magically works by itself, which is an auto campaign. So yes. let's talk about the mistakes that you see so many sellers make. So what they, what, what people, what sellers need to avoid when they, when they create an auto campaign and what are the best practices, basically? But first and foremost, do you want to dive a little bit more into what what types of campaigns are available? If 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 um, you know if whoever is watching the video doesn't have that information as well. So yeah. if you go to your Amazon uh, seller, uh, Amazon advertising dashboard, mm -hmm. you see on the targeting types there are two targeting types, which is the automatic and also the manual campaign. So with the automatic campaign, it's really a very loose match type of campaign that is only available for sponsored products. It basically gives Amazon permission to find your keywords in ASIN for them to bid on, right? So the only information that you give to Amazon is basically your listing, right? So that's why it's very important to really have your listing optimized because that would cascade down into different things and that would include Amazon PPC. Right? And this would just give the Amazon algorithm, just basically, this would allow the Amazon algorithm to go out, find keyword matches to your uh, listing versus in manual campaigns where you have to provide Amazon exactly what keywords in ASIN to the match for for your ads. Mm. You could you could kind of think of for automatic ads. You could basically think of telling Amazon the destination without giving them a map. So that's why I would uh, categorize the auto campaign. That's that's so smart, actually. <laughs> yeah, you're a hundred percent right. So what are the common mistakes? I know there's a lot. But what are the common mistakes that you find once somebody, you know, let's set up an auto campaign and what, 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 um, what mistakes do they, do they like, what, we want people to avoid making these common mistakes. What are they? Yeah. So with Amazon auto campaign, it's like the oldest campaign type on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Amazon start, 
uh, PPC started maybe in 2015, around 2015, 2016. So. Yeah. Back then, the only campaign you actually can make is um, automatic campaign for sponsored product. And because that is so old, it's not like the new, newest and greatest, and a lot of people just forget them and just like say, okay, just create an auto campaign, right? And without really having a true objective, what they're really like mm. optimized and used for. So I, from what I can tell, a lot of Amazon sellers, especially the newer ones, will just create an auto campaign because it's like the easiest, right? Low expression. And basically their, their objective is to, is to get sales. Yeah. But with, yeah. Well, of course, of course. I yeah. mean, when you create a, yeah, of course. But for, for but it's the um, wrong objective, especially if yeah, you're it's a wrong a product. Yeah. yeah. It's a wrong objective. Sorry, because, but yeah. Especially when you're new, especially yeah. if it's a new product, because when you are uh, running an Amazon auto campaign, your main objective is shouldn't be just sales is also on researching and confirmation. What does that mean? So confirmation is to make sure that your listing is fully optimized. And how do you can confirm this? You can confirm this by when, once you run the campaign, the data comes in. And if you go to your search term report, you see all the search term that the customer is uh, searching for your listing. If those keywords matches your product, right? When you kind of look into it, what Amazon is seeing and what you see matches that that is when you can confirm that your listing is fully optimized and you could really begin begin creating more ads and scaling it on the other hand if those keywords don't match up that means that you really have to like go back to your listing and re-optimize it make sure that amazon seeing what you're seeing and then the second part is research right so research is that again the data from your search term report you can see what Amazon is bidding for and what customer is actually converting for your, for your product. So for example, a customer bid on black mouse and that converted for your auto campaign. Then that is that particular search term could potentially be used in your manual campaign. So that is the research part. So you're not only just driving sales with an auto campaign, but you also need to use them for research. I think the research component of that is like the true value of the auto campaigns. And it shouldn't necessarily, a lot of people like have an auto campaign and they don't see it in driving sales, but that, that really shouldn't be the reason that Amazon sellers decide to pause them because they're not really driving a lot. That's of fantastic. What you said, because mostly, you know, it's disheartening if that's what, you, you know, yeah. if you decide, yeah, I'm going to do an auto campaign and, you know, I'm going to see those sales rolling in. If that's your objective, then when that doesn't happen, then you think you're a failure and this whole business is a failure and this, this, this whole thing is not going to work uh, or the product is not good or the marketplace is the wrong marketplace. You start getting all of that, um, all of those doubts. Whereas I understand what you're trying to say. Whereas if you have the proper objective for why you are doing an auto campaign, then if you get sales, then that's fantastic. Yes, of course, everybody wants sales. But at the end of the day, that's not what the objective of this campaign is. And, you know, as you're explaining, I got um, the idea of, you know, when you're in the hospitality industry and you have a restaurant, for example, when you first open a restaurant, you do for a couple of weeks, uh, what is known as a soft launch where people can come and, you know, the whole system and team uh, can can be uh, put under pressure and under stress so that once the final launch is done, then everything is ready. So maybe that type of mindset for when you are launching your product with an auto campaign, that's the mindset that you need to have. This is just a soft launch for me to verify that the keywords are correct, the optimization is correct, and everything is great. And then I can just jump into, you know, full focus on the ads and spending uh, at a much higher level. Yeah, correct. So yeah, I, I think uh, another example that I uh, thought in my head is that you could think of it as like a fishing hook. And yeah. also once you, once you're able to get a bite from the fish, you bring in the net. 
basically that's what your objective should be with the auto campaign. Perfect. That's exactly All right. It. So so if you do get sales, fantastic. If you don't, that's not the objective in the beginning. So we need to be in the beginning, yeah. Yeah, we need to be calm. We need to be, you know, we need to put things in perspective. Um, um, what What is the second thing? Okay, and I think another thing yeah. that um, Amazon seller make with auto campaign is like a few mistakes I also see, right? Uh, I think because the fact that it's called auto, auto campaign, mm -hmm. a lot of Amazon sellers would think it's actually auto. Yeah. basically just set and forget and don't do anything hmm. and then when they see the acos being really really extraordinarily high they're like okay this doesn't work no it's not a set and forget type of campaign you always have to optimize it like other campaigns so that would mean uh, when i say optimize for auto campaign that would be me doing the hard work of going into your search term report and constantly adding negatives, right? Negative tar targeting for keywords in ASIN. So that would prevent like the really irrelevant keywords from always being uh, wasted on your auto campaign, right? So the best practice would be, you know, one, constantly updating the bids. So I think now with auto campaign, there's like four, uh, four match types. Yep. So constantly uh, update, down bid that based on your target. And then constantly adding a uh, negative, uh, negative keywords and negative bases, right? Think of like tuning a piano or aligning something. So what you need to do is that the parameters of the Amazon searches for auto campaign is this wide. So what you need to do in your auto campaign is slowly get it more and more narrow to the right alignment. Before we continue with this video, let me know in the comment section below, what is your favorite type of ad campaign to create? Maybe you haven't created one yet, so let me know. If you prefer manual or you prefer auto, let me know in the comments. And if you want to join a free masterclass with Rick and myself, dissecting everything related to PPC ads, then you'll find the link to register in the description box of this video. Make sure that you like, you leave a comment, of course, and you are subscribed. Let's continue. All of that is clear, and those are like really important points because I think a lot of people make those mistakes, mostly related to the auto campaign being like it works all by itself. That's why when you figure out that there are types of tools such as seller metric that can help uh, automate your ads, you think, well, the, the ad campaign is already automatic. So why would I need somebody to auto, like, why would I need a software to automate my campaigns and all of that stuff? So um, what does, what does a, a software tool such as seller metric, what is the advantage of using that type of tool? And um, let's also discuss potentially who is the ideal customer or who is the ideal seller rather that needs to use something like seller metric. So I think the ideal seller with the people would be the sellers that are looking to scale into different marketplaces. Mm. I think when you start selling maybe one or two skill, you skews, you could easily optimize it on your own up front end. Once you get to five or six skews, that's going to be more and more of a hassle. And then you scale out into different marketplaces. So it's the number of skews times the number of marketplaces you decide to sell it. So when you scale, that like that, the time it takes to really look into it, your Amazon advertising increases exponentially. So that is basically the best point where the sellers would use uh, seller metrics and the like. So one thing that we really do really well in seller metrics is that we not only optimize for your ROI, but we also optimize for the seller's time as well. So what do I mean by that? So when Amazon sellers scale to different marketplaces, they were managing a lot of different Amazon advertising accounts. So with seller metrics, what we do well is that we can unify all your marketplaces. That allows you to optimize all your metrics and optimization, all, all your marketplaces in one single login session. So you don't have to really go through the hassle of going in and out of marketplaces because under that one login, seller metrics have all the data across all your marketplaces for you. 
let me give a demo of how users mm. could actually optimize their auto campaign using solar metrics by easily adding uh, negative keywords without yeah. going to your search term report. So this is uh, this screen is the automatic real screen, and this is more or less the, where the magic happens with mm. solar metrics. And you could see uh, under this two column right here, the negative rules and search rules. For the, to add your negative keywords, you will set like, you set a negative rule. And let's just say we want to, for this auto campaign, we want to set a negative rule. Right. What you're gonna do, just name your campaign, test negative rule. And then, when this rule triggers, where you want to put the negative keywords into, as in the destination campaign, in this case, we'll put it into the same campaign. And then this is the threshold, how many clicks with zero orders before you want your rules to trigger. So let's just put four. And then you could choose whether you want to the system to find the keyword or a negative ASIN. Let's very easy, very clear, yeah. yeah. Most 90% of the time you'll probably use like that exact negative mm -hmm. uh, rarely use phrase, create this rule. Simple as that. Simple as that. So it's the actual, um, same thing that you would do, but you would do it manually. So you have to go through yeah. the search term report yeah. and keep checking it and all, checking it and all of that. But now you've just, you have a software that can do it for you. Yeah, basically the software can uh, really streamline your workflow. Yeah. Uh, as I can, as I, as you see, I just set up one rule. Mm -hmm. And uh, once the rule is triggered, everything will lay out for you on the screen right here on the negative keywords. And then you see the metrics and you can make the decision whether you want to add that as a negative. For example, in the screen, I see that at this particular uh, search term is doing horribly 22 clicks, zero orders. And I want to definitely add that as a negative yeah. keyword. So all you have to do is click on apply. And basically that would be added on your negative keywords. And it's done. Yeah. So it allows you to really streamline your optimization, constantly add the negatives, irrelevant negatives to your campaign. That is really the way to uh, optimize your campaign. Perfect. Very important takeaways from this video. Number one, an auto campaign is made for you to gather data, information, and most importantly, keywords for you to decide how to use later on. Number two, the auto campaign, even though it's called auto, it doesn't mean it's automatic. It's actually something that you need to like in life and on Amazon, you need to manage and monitor it all the time. Make sure that you do all of those and you don't make the mistakes and make sure that you uh, go check out Seller Metrics. They have given us a fantastic code for you to use, Se Seller Society 50. You can go ahead and use that code and get 50% off for the very first three months of Seller Metrics. Thanks so much, for Thanks so much Rick and the Seller Metrics team. I'll see you in another video with more information. Bye. So Rick, as you know, this business, uh, by this business, I mean Amazon, um, lots of people have been thinking about uh, Amazon, but maybe potentially a lot of people, it came on their radar because of 2020. So as an Amazon seller, an entrepreneur, you've been through it all. I like to ask people this question. For anyone that's on the fence, do you think Amazon is a good business for anyone to well, we're, we're both biased, but why, let's say, why do you think that Amazon is a good business for somebody to start right now in 2021, 2022? Well, at the end of the day, Amazon is the largest game in town. Yes, it's competitive. Um, so I would like it to kind of, at the end of the day, I think it's better to build a shop in a high traffic mall. 
mm -hmm. and create a shop in like a corner of Main Street or something like that. So again, I am biased. Uh, also, yeah. Amazon, <laughs> yeah, like you. And uh, I think I think the key thing is that when I first started, um, so one thing that I found out that Amazon does FBA and they handle a lot of the logistics and. If I think about how much time I would have spent taking care of the logistics if it weren't for Amazon, so I go through my orders. Uh, so at so in my previous business, I would potentially have like 400, 500 orders a day, and imagine me spending time fulfilling that, right? And instead of having like Amazon handle that, uh, it would have been a uh, uh, pretty hard to do. Number one, and something that I actually don't want to do. So Amazon can handle all that. Yeah. And with also Amazon, the, the pie is growing. I think I looked at stats. Um, I think it's around 400 billion worth of goods to be sold. Um, at least it's predicted that it's gonna be next year 400 billion. So there's a lot of opportunity, not only in Amazon US, but the UAE, obviously, Europe. Um, Australia. Uh, wherever so there's an Amazon, it's basically the same business model, yeah, but in a different exactly. market. So exactly. there's there's positives and negatives, but um, the most important thing is, I guess, people need to know it's not a get rich quick, not a get rich quick scheme. It's actually a business, so it requires a lot of hard work. But it's a very interesting type of business, very different than you know having a traditional business or even maybe having a nine to five job. Yeah, it's, it's definitely different from nine, nine, yeah. to, nine to five job for sure. Um, so a lot of fundamental of like just good business sense apply with Amazon. Um, so it's definitely not a get rich uh, quick scheme. You still have to do the fund fundamentals, such as product research, uh, sourcing, uh, dealing with suppliers, uh, marketing. Um, creating a team, hiring staff. So those fundamentals that you still need to do when you run your Amazon business. So yeah, it's definitely not a get rich scheme, quick type of business, but it's- But it is a get rich. It is a get rich, but not get rich quick. Yeah, it's a get rich. It's, it's not, it is, it could be a get rich, uh, yeah, uh, a of get rich yeah, uh, type of it. business, but it's <laughs> not a get rich quick as in, in one or two months or six months, I'm going to be driving a Lamborghini type of business. So. No. <laughs> maybe in a couple of years, but not in Yeah, maybe in a couple months. of years. Yeah. Not in six months. Definitely, yeah. if you know what you're doing in a couple of years. No, definitely. Right. But like, yeah, perfect. Thanks so much, Rick. Yeah, thanks a lot, Crystal. It's been a total joy to be on your channel.